Good, Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the forum, the Washington County Public Affairs Forum. We have an absolutely fantastic program today. Actually, I haven't heard it yet, but our speaker left his notes out here, and I'm reading it, and it looks very, very good. Don't worry, you won't hear the program from me, not when we have Mark Harmon from the Washington County Museum. And without further nattering, at least until later, let me please invite Mark Harmon from the Washington County Museum. Thank you. Thank you. I greatly appreciate this opportunity to come speak before you today. Um, for those who don't know me, uh, I came to the Washington County Museum uh, last May 1st, was my first day on the job. Uh, but I'm not only new to the museum, I'm new to your state of Oregon, or I guess I could say now my state of Oregon. Um, I'm originally from Ohio, and I spent the last 25 years, though, in the state of Illinois, where I was working outside of the Chicago metro area. Um, throughout that time. Um, so I've spent about 30 years in the museum profession. Actually, this year I celebrate my 30th anniversary. Um, but since coming here to Washington County, I, I've learned quite a bit about this area and been able to enjoy it with my wife and I. And the one thing I keep encountering is that when you talk to people and they say, why did you come here? And I usually tell them, well, I came here for a job. And they said, oh, Intel? <laughs> no, and I mentioned the Washington County Museum, and they go, oh, we have a museum? I choose the first reaction. And that, uh, obviously, you know, from a professional standpoint, gives me great concern, but then again, it also gives me a great opportunity to talk about it. So my first question here today is actually for you. How many of you have actually been to the Washington County Museum? Awesome. That's great. Now, how many of you have been to both facilities of the Washington County Museum? Just a couple. Well, we're going to work on the rest of you. So that's become kind of my, my charge right now, is to create a public awareness of the museum and let you know uh, about where we've come from, what we're doing, and hopefully where we're going. Because it's my personal goal to make sure that ultimately the Washington County Museum becomes an indispensable cultural asset for this community. So here's what we're going to talk a little bit about, is its history. First of all, the museum started back in the 1930s. Uh, a brother and sister, Albert and Edith, were uh, descendants of the family that came across on the Oregon Trail. And they collected a lot of documents and artifacts related to the county's history. And as they were getting older, they decided it needed to go somewhere. They had the vision of having a museum in Washington County. So they went to the county commission and they said, here's everything we've collected. And they said, we want you to preserve it in perpetuity and you know, share it with the people so they can learn from our past. Now, gratified, I'm sure that the county appreciated it. They ultimately stored it first in the county courthouse in Hillsborough. But like a lot of government agencies and probably other entities that get a collection, they were kind of baffled what to do next. They weren't quite sure. So they started almost immediately working with friends of Albert and Edith's. They were members of the Sons and Daughters of Washington County Pioneers. And so that group became kind of the caretakers of the collection. But as that news got around that the county started collecting things, they started getting more things. And so they quickly outgrew that little space. And so for the next 30 years, the collection kind of led a nomadic life. It moved around. Next place after the courthouse was the roller rink at Shoot Park. Now, it was a typical roller rink that you might find in the period, but the one thing I noticed in the collection, there was this awesome image of two guys wrestling on roller skates, which I just had to include because that, I, that would just floor me. I mean, I've seen roller derbies. I've never seen roller wrestling. So I thought this is a cool thing to add here. Um, but it was stored there at Shoot Park for quite a while. And again, it moved around. And then it ended up at the local library, you know, a Carnegie type library in Hillsboro. But at a certain point, the county decided that they needed to take a little bit better care of it. Ultimately, it came to rest in Hillsborough at the Heidel House. And the Heidel House is right on Main Street, and that facility was purchased 
by the subsequent group to the Sons of Pioneers, because in 1956, that group evolved into what was officially became the Washington County Historical Society. And so the Historical Society in the late 50s said, we need a real museum building. Well, at that point in time in American history, when everybody said, we need a real museum, they thought, let's buy a house. Let's buy an old house and let's put it in there. That was their first concept of what a museum should be. So they bought that building and they opened up the museum in the early 1960s. Problem is when they did that, they had the same issue that a lot of museums do when they first start. Everybody goes, oh my god, we have a museum? I've got this great stuff in my basement, my attic, I'm going to give it to you. And so their collection just boomed. And it was in a very short time that they started to outgrow that space. So then in the early 1970s, the county commission decided to take a little bit more formal control of what was going on because from the beginning they had always provided some little stipend to the historical side to fund the museum. And so they created the Washington County Museum Commission. And the first members there were Grace Hughes, Dr. Archie Pittman, and James Thayer. And those individuals in about 1975 had decided that we need a little bit more um, consistent leadership of the museum. And so they recommended that the county commission actually hire a full-time curator, which they did. So that was about 1975. But again, they needed the space. And so the professional staff there started looking around, and they looked at every opportunity. One of them was the old Hillsborough post office that was going to be torn down and made way for a new post office. They tried to save it. It didn't work. So there was also other concurrent fundraising activities going on because they knew eventually we're gonna have this new building, we need money for it. And so they started stocking the money aside. But about this time in the mid-1970s, uh, Portland Community College, under the dynamic driving energy of then President Amos de Berdinas, envisioned an educational and cultural center at Rock Creek. His vision included museums, a library, recreational facilities of all types, and even the county fairgrounds. He thought it should all move there, and that's where everybody from Washington County would go to learn and have fun. Well, the proactive museum staff jumped in on this, and they ultimately resulted in a three-way agreement between the Washington County Historical Society, Washington County Government, and Portland Community College. And the idea was to build a brand new museum on the PCC campus. The um, facility was funded strictly by private donations. It was funded strictly through the Historical Society. Now, the interesting thing is that once this museum got up and running, they discovered the museum was the only entity that showed up to flesh out the vision of Dr. Bernie Dennis. All the other ones, the library, the county fairgrounds, the art, art museum city you can see didn't end up there. So only we did. Well, in 1978, they started uh, launching a comprehensive and ambitious new museum fund, which they broke ground in the spring of 1982. They moved in in July of 82, and then officially dedicated in January of 83. And that's what the original museum looked like from that vantage point of the front. And ultimately, it hasn't changed much aesthetically from what you see there. But over the next 30 years, guess what happened? Same thing when they bought the Heidel House. Wow, we've got a museum. I've got some more stuff for you. And so they decided to give you more stuff and more things, and it started to grow. But also, they started to have more activities because they had a real exhibition gallery and real programming space that they could use. They had their own land around the building that they had all kinds of programming. And so a real building, larger building, more activities, the museum grew in support, and in all that it did. So by the early 2000s, the society board recognized that the collection and relative activities were outgrowing even that space. And they said, if we need to continue as a vibrant museum, we need to make some changes. So in the early 2000s, they started to raise funds for what they called the Millennium Project, which was to actually enlarge this facility. And that project 
didn't go as quickly as the first time. This one took a little bit longer, about 10 years, because we didn't finally dedicate the new edition until last year, on August 31st, 2015, when we expanded the museum. Uh, it almost doubled in size, actually. But during that whole process, the society board recognizes that being out at Rock Creek posed some challenges. <clears throat> One of the main challenges is, if you can imagine, the museum is outside of the central part of the county. The demographics of the county are all to the west of where we're located, the people we're trying to serve. And so the Historical Society Board looked for the opportunity to take the museum, at least its public activities, and move them more towards the center part of the county. And lo and behold, a portion of the New Hillsborough Civic Center became available. The space that we now occupy was originally intended for the public library, um, but during the process of them moving in there, they discovered that um, they had a better opportunity in the building that they're currently in. And so the space that had been built for them remained empty. And so the Historical Society and the city government came up with a plan, and they moved the museum's exhibitions and programming space into the new Hillsborough Civic Center. And that happened in November of 2012, so just a little over three years ago. Now, the challenges with that space is it's on a second floor. And if you drive by, it looks pretty much what you're seeing there. So when we're trying to describe to people where we're located, they're going, where? Where are you located? And then we have to say, you know where Starbucks is? And they go, yeah, we're upstairs. Oh, got it. So then they know exactly how to find us. So it's, it's a little bit of a challenge. Um, anybody here has been in business, especially on retail business, you know the old saying, location, location, location? That's one of our challenges to work around. But we're doing it. We're, we're getting more and more people to understand where we're at. So those of you who originally raised your hand and you've never been to the museum, those who haven't been to the museum yet, raise your hand. Now you have no excuse. You know where we're at. Okay. So, the museum, during this whole time process, had somewhat been known as the Washington County Museum. I mean, you saw the original sign back at, uh, let me go back here, back in 1982, where it does say the Washington County Museum, but it was never quite official. Most things, it was branded the Washington County Historical Society. But when they moved to the Hillsborough facility, they realized that we're more than just history. We're about the present, and we're about the future. Because every museum is truly about the future. Those who are a historical museum, we take the past, we teach people about where they've come to in the present, so they can get to a better future. And that's what we're about. And so the museum board decided to completely rebrand and officially call itself the Washington County Museum. And it came up with a new mission. And the mission is that the Washington County Museum ignites the imagination and brings to life the diverse cultures that so richly define this remarkable region. What's missing? History. History. It's not that history is not part of it, but history is part of our culture. History. Culture is anything man-made. And so this is about the culture of this entire community. Everything, the past, the present, building on to the future. So what do we do at the Washington County Museum? Well, we'll start with research. We have considerable archives at our facility at Rock Creek. We have over 30,000 photographs alone, and about only 3,000 of those photographs have been digitized up to this point. We have tens of thousands of other documents, whether they are letters from the Oregon Trail itself, through journals of people in the 19th and early 20th centuries, to public records of court trials, um, to various vital records that were uh, deposited, as well as a complete set of bound volumes of the Argus newspaper, which we finally received, as well as countless maps and other things that people have given. The three-dimensional artifacts range everywhere from like a little campaign button or a piece of jewelry that somebody might have worn, all the way up to a full-size 19th century farm wagon. And again, everything in between. We found some interesting things that um, the staff 
who's also somewhat new, uh, didn't notice everything. When the whole facility uh, just after it opened up in August, we were finally able to close a temporary storage facility that the museum had in Hillsborough. It was at the old Carnation factory building. And once we closed, we brought everything over, and we noticed some different things. And one of them happened to be, and I should have brought a picture of it because it is actually kind of large to show you. But to describe it, it's like a wood toolbox with a long bamboo stick on it. And at the end of the bamboo stick is this long, round piece that I finally discovered is a bike tire rim. And it's all wrapped up with tape and together. But if you open it up, there's all kinds of dials and old vacuum tubes, like from a television set. And the best guess we have right now is that somebody saw an old popular mechanics and said, I can make a metal detector. That's what we think it is, because we, we're, we're just out of other ideas. But that's the best we've come up with at this point. So there's a lot of interesting things at the museum. Um, one of the things we also have is um, a piece of, and I find this one, and you might also find this one, the most morbid item. We actually have a portion of a noose. It's because in the late 1800s, early 1900s, there was a very, or excuse me, early 1900s, there was a very famous uh, murder trial in town. And Albert Tozier went to this hanging that was by invitation, and he cut a piece of the noose after the hanging and said, we're going to save this. <laughs> that ended up with us also. So we have the research. And like most museums, we have exhibitions. Because museum, we teach with artifacts. Schools and libraries teach other ways, but museums are educational institutions that teach with three-dimensional artifacts. And so we have our exhibits. We have long-term ones, like the one we just opened up this, this past summer. It was on to Oregon. And the key item there is a wagon that was used in the 1959 cavalcade that celebrated Oregon Centennial. Um, if you're not familiar with that, they had a variety of wagons that were each one dedicated to a different community, and they started off in Independence, Missouri, and literally came across the old Oregon Trail to Oregon. Um, remarkably, the one for Hillsboro was still in existence, and the family that um, made and built it, his was name was Weaver Pop Clark, donated it recently to the museum, and we now have that item on display, and you can come see it. But we have other temporary exhibits. Our temporary exhibits feature things like the Changing Faces of Poverty, which was a focus on the Community Action Organization, celebrating their 50 years of uh, history and all that they've done. We're currently in talks with other businesses to celebrate their major milestones, like the Centennial and another 50th anniversary. And so we're hoping to share those histories with folks. We also have some fun ones, um, because let's face it, culture is not always about the past, it's also about the present. And so we have one that was Let Go My Lego. And if you haven't been there yet, it closes on the end of the month. So we hope you come out to it. But it's kind of an art one. Um, now, I have to admit, when this idea first came up to me, I was one of those who said, I, yeah, I played with Legos as a kid. And they're like, don't you know, Legos are for adults now. You should see the artwork they're making with these things. And they're right. There's things in here that are absolutely remarkable. Um, you can almost see some of the um, ships in the picture. There's actually cityscapes and a variety of other things. So we have things like Let Go My Lego is one temporary exhibit. And we are planning some new ones in the future. Our big one in the future is timber. And it is about the timber industry in Washington County, which as we all know um, was one of the mainstays of this county on the early years. Um, but as time has gone on, it has gotten smaller and probably a little bit more controversial for some folks, but it's had a major impact in the development of this county and actually still impacts this county. And so that's what one exhibit that will come up this coming fall. But we also have educational programs. Our educational programs are both outreach, such as our mobile museums. Our mobile museums primarily go to uh, school groups and other youth groups, because uh, if you can't come to us, we will come to you. But we have programs about the Kalapuya, about the Oregon Trail, Lewis and Clark. We have one called School Days, which actually compares schools that the kids experience today to how their great grandparents might have experienced it 100 years ago. And uh, so it's kind of interesting to see the, the kids' reactions when they go, 
wow, that's where they went to school? <laughs> you know, they didn't have electricity, they didn't have PowerPoints, you know, that's amazing. So, so we have a variety of those types of outreach programs, but a lot of our outreach programs can also go to adult groups, um, whether it is just a service club or a senior group or a retirement community. But we have a lot of special um, programming. Our family free days are on the second Saturday of every month. Um, these were initially intended for individuals um, who might be economically challenged uh, to pay for like a museum admission. So we've got a sponsor through grants to fund an opportunity for individuals to come in and do some type of activity like a hands-on or see some type of speaker. Um, you can see the ones in the photo there. Uh, the one uh, gentleman did all kinds of like little science experiments for kids. There was another opportunity this past summer where we had Pioneer Day and there was actually these giant essentially Lincoln logs that kids can actually make a little cabin. Um, our next one is coming up here in a short period, let's see, on February 13th to celebrate Oregon's birthday. And so we'll have a lot of activities revolved around that where you'll be able to um, learn about the mountain man and uh, packing the Oregon Trail wagon if you want to get back into that pop weaver wagon. Uh, also, if you notice, a lot of museums when they talk about programming, they talk about kids. I'm a firm believer that everybody likes to learn something new, not just little kids. High school kids like to learn, college age kids like to learn, adults like us like to learn. And so the museum has adult opportunities um, to get out, to learn something, to have fun. We have a museum after dark periodically. A lot of times our museum after dark revolves around some of the exhibitions that we have. For instance, this one uh, that we had recently revolved around our Let Go or Lego. And so you actually have the adults in the room playing with Lego. Uh, the ladies there at the four printer were actually making Lego jewelry. So you can actually make a bracelet or earrings. Um, the one lady on the right there is kind of showing her earring, but you can't see it too well in the photograph. Um, we also have something for those who aren't too much into the hands-on. They, they like the more... Um, I will say informative type of presentation. So we do have Crossroads lectures. Uh, and again, these are a variety of topics leading from the arts to the science to history. Uh, the first one I experienced here at the museum was on Joe Meeks, uh, who most people are familiar with the county history, knows was one of the leading pioneers of the period. But we're also about science. And so our next one is actually um, all about, is Oregon ready for the big one? And so our speaker is Scott uh, Burns. He's a professor emeritus of geology and past chair of the Department of Geology at Portland State University. And he is coming on February 17th. All of these programs that I'm mentioning, the Crossroads, the After Dark, um, Family Free Day, all of these are on our website, which I'll share with you at the end. Um, but we do like to do some hands-on, because some people just love hands-on things. And our next hands-on is all around the Easter time. And so these are Ukrainian egg decorating, and that's going to be on March 19th. And so if you have the niche for doing something hands-on, come on out. But the museum has more than just educational opportunities. Um, sometimes we have to raise a little money, because again, we are still a nonprofit organization. And we have three major events each year. Uh, in the fall, we have our gala, and our past gala, our Keynote speaker, or our, our MC was Miss Oregon, Allie Wallace, and our entertainment was Curtis Salgado. Uh, we had a lot of entertainment as well as auction items, and the food was fabulous. We were at the Northwest Event Center. We also have, there we go, um, Taste of Washington County, which is an opportunity for businesses to showcase their food, their wine, their distilled goods, their brewery items. Uh, now, this one is a little bit different because in the past, it's been held at our facility at Rock Creek. This year, we can't, and so we're looking for a new location uh, because that facility where we held all that party last year was primarily in our storage area that is now full of artifacts that we brought back from our temporary storage. So um, we're looking for a new location. But one of the things we're doing as we're looking for these new locations is looking around the county because I also learned that if people didn't know they had a museum, a lot of times they say, oh yeah, your museum, that's that Hillsboro place, right? Well, no, not exactly. We're about Washington County. 
We're not just about Hillsborough. We're about Hillsborough and Beaverton and Aloha and Sherwood and Gaston and Banks and Little Timber. We're about every place in Washington County. And so we're trying to take some of our events and move them around a little bit. We're looking at our education programs and moving them around a little bit. So the future, well, we've got a few things in the works right at the moment. One is our enhanced exhibitions. Our exhibits um, in the past have focused a lot just on history, but again, we're expanding those. We're trying to make those more interactive, a greater experience for both children as well as adults. We're expanding our educational programs. Again, as I mentioned before, we're trying to move outside of the museum walls. So we're coming out to you. We're going out to various locations throughout the county and right, those are being scheduled at this point. And again, you can find many of those online. Um, we're also enlarging our board of directors. Originally, the board had about seven individuals. Um, prior to my arrival, the board expanded to 15 officially. Uh, but we have a lot of openings and we're trying to get individuals to fill those openings. What we're looking for are individuals who help us diversify. Um, primarily, our past board members have been in the Hillsborough Beaverton area. Again, because we're located in Rock Creek and downtown Hillsborough. But we're looking for individuals that come from all over Washington County. Again, as far away as the little town of Timber, all the way down to Sherwood, Banks, Gaston, you name it, we're looking for those individuals. So um, if you know somebody who would like to contribute to the museum and help us grow, um, let them know we have that opportunity. We are also uh, did a little changing of how we uh, do business. Like most organizations, they get a lot of their revenue through membership and sponsorships. In the past, ours were separate. Our board recently joined those into one program. So if you become a member at a certain level, you get the same benefits as you would have as your sponsorship. And we also divided it into two. Uh, I believe we've had at the back table um, opportunities for let's see, personal memberships. And then we also have one for corporate if you have a business. And then finally, we need a new strategic plan. The last strategic plan was done in 2008. And that strategic plan did not envision two facilities. Um, that dream came about after it was done. And so in that interim, we now have two facilities. And so now we have to kind of re-envision how we're going to move forward with those facilities, as well as all the other activities that we're doing to, again, make the museum a cultural asset for Washington County. So the last thing I had is if you want to find us, here we are online. So, I guess at this point, where do you have any questions for me? And this is where I get to be the heavy and say, anybody can ask mm -hmm. Mr. Harmon questions as long as they have a membership. And if you haven't purchased your membership, he's waving and... Find me, I'll take your 50 bucks. Oh, and he'll take it quickly and easily and very, very well. We take credit cards here, too, <laughs> and checks. And, and I make sure he gives the credit cards back. Oh. Ladies and gentlemen, first of all, thank you, Mr. Harmon, for a wonderful presentation and a great introduction to the museum. And now let me please invite those paid up members to bring them forward your questions. Thanks again, Mr. Harmon. Thank you. John Blackman, forum member. <clears throat> first question, the location in Hillsborough, do you have an elevator? Yes, it does have an elevator. It's all um, handicap accessible. And second question, of course you haven't gone into specifics about the various exhibits, but I am curious to know about the native people that were here long before the Europeans. Do you have any uh, exhibits in, in regards to them, or do you have any relationship with native tribes? Um, first of all, the uh, exhibit is on the Kalapuya, which was the Native American uh, people that were here uh, prior, prior to um, the settlement period. Um, and that's the first exhibit actually you'll walk into when you come into the museum. And we have a variety of things on display that um, are directly from Washington County, uh, whether they are stone artifacts or other materials. And uh, the museum does have a very good uh, relationship with the uh, tribe, uh, the Grand Run. And uh, they've helped us develop many of our programming, including we have a mobile museum that's just about the Kalapuya that they helped develop with us. Thank you. You're welcome. Hi, I'm Phil Nelson, Farm Member. Appreciate you coming. I have a question about photography. You mentioned you have about 30,000 or so photographs, and you're digitally saving them. I'm curious.
curious about two things. How long does that last, or is it kind of an indefinite, eternal kind of a preservation? And secondly, do you keep the photographs themselves, or are they being disposed of, uh, say, out to the dump or something? No, uh, no. Uh, first of all, nothing's being disposed of. Um, you know, we're keeping the actual hard copies and the negatives, and uh, some are glass negatives, and some are the old tin types. Um, so everything stays, but we are digitizing to make it more accessible to individuals. Um, we have a thing, it's called the Washington County Heritage Online, and it's a, it's a database that is maintained for us through Pacific University, and those things are so individuals around, not just Oregon, around the world, can tap into the resources that we have. Um, because, you know, if somebody, say, from Oregon, but they happen to be living, you know, with the military in Europe, and they want some information, well, they don't want to come back here right to us. They can simply go online and be able to eventually just find that information digitally. Hi, I'm Emily Knapp, a member, uh, also a local attorney, and I often deal with estates and people who think they have wonderful things that should be donated to the museum. Is there any place online or through your museum where I can find out if you really want any of this stuff and what periods might be of interest and if I can dump boxes on you and let you guys sort them. <laughs> <laughs> um, yes, I would actually agree when like spring cleaning comes and you see people dumping things in their trash. Yeah, I'm one of those, I cringe. Um, I, I guess my family would say I'm a bit of a pack rat myself. But um, yes, when the museum takes things in, what we have to do is look and make sure it meets our mission. And our mission means that anything that we bring in has to have a provenance, a connection to Washington County. If those items do not, but we as a professional <coughs> staff feel that they are, are good quality and the historic nature for some other institution, we will help the donor make a contact with that other place. Um, and I've done that several times for individuals who have found something or they're just cleaning house. And they said, do you want this? And we look at it and say, it doesn't meet our mission, but it meets the mission of this other museum. And we've been able to help them make that connection. Um, so yes, if somebody drops things off to us, they simply um, sign a temporary receipt which gives us the option of either returning it to them, taking it in, or disposing of it as, as we see fit. Does that answer your question? Thanks. Awesome. Harry Bodine, for a member. What, what is the, the uh, museum's relationship to the there's a new organization, the Beaverton, Beaverton Historical Society? And also, with the group in Cedar Mill is trying to raise money to preserve the John Quincy Adams House on Cornell Road, 1875. Is there, are there connections here? Well, the museum has relationships with all the local historical societies. Uh, we believe that partnerships are um, a great way to work together in that we all have the same goal, which is to preserve the history of this area. And so there's some individuals that would prefer to work more on a, I'll say a municipal level, as well as some things that uh, work better at a county level because the story is more than just one municipality. So yes, we work with them. Um, there's actually a round table in the area that meets at the museum periodically, um, and all the historical sites are represented. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Chris Leslie, forum member. Thank you, Mr. Harmon, for coming. This is an exceptional speech you're giving us. It's a lot of information. I just wondered if you had population roles or like who was on the wagon trains and lists of people, you know, like voter ID. <coughs> um, the museum has a variety of information. Um, when it comes to the Oregon Trail and who was on it, um, I'm not sure anybody has a complete database of that. Uh, you know, we have a pretty good sense of, at least for Washington County, of the earlier settlers, um, because a lot of that was recorded by the individuals who started the Washington County Historical Society as, because they were the sons and daughters of Washington County pioneers. Um, but beyond that, um, I, I couldn't answer about you know what the relationship is with outside of Washington County. Thank you. Sure. <clears throat> Second bite of the apple. Okay. Back in the 1990s, when I was still employed, 
the uh, I was at the Education Service District one day, uh, I think Rock Creek area maybe. Anyway, there was a map on the wall out there in the hallway of the school districts in Washington County in 1892, and there were about 120 of them, as I remember correctly. Magnificent map. Do you folks have that, or do you know where it is? We have considerable maps. I'm not sure exactly which one you're speaking of, but if it was one that was on the wall of our facility in the 90s, I'm sure we still have it. I'm sure it was not disposed of. I'm sorry, this was the Education Service District, so it's not, okay. it was not, uh, not the museum. Okay. Um, yeah, I, I'm unfortunately, I, I don't know the specifics of the collection but enough to know if that item is in there. But we can find out. Eric Squires, uh, Executive Director. Um, first, thank you for a great presentation. Very informative. Uh, second, I learned a lot about the museum I didn't know, and I, I, I'm grateful. Thank you. What I'd like to know is a little bit more about the uh, newspaper scanning that uh, you talked about, or the newspaper um, um, archives that you received, the bound copies of the Argus. Mm -hmm. So, we're in the corner at the Aloha Library. We received copies, uh, bound copies of the Aloha Breeze. Presumably, we both got those from the closing of the, uh, uh, the newspaper office in Hillsborough here about a year or two ago. I'm curious if you can tell me what plans you might have for scanning, digitizing, and making those old newspapers available, and if, you choose, if uh, part of the workflow of that would be making it available through the Washington County Museum website, or is this just kind of uh, something that's been stalled and is going to be put on the back burner for a little while? Can you tell me what's, what you might be doing with those bound copies of the newspaper? Well, first of all, they're available right now for anybody to come take a look at them. Excellent. Um, as a matter of digitization, um, that is still in the works. Uh, actually, the staff and I had a conversation not too long ago because we had individuals who were trying to get copies from a distance. And there's no scanner at our facility that's large enough for those. So what the staff ended up having to do was simply take a camera and photograph it, and they sent the individual a JPEG of the page that they wanted. Um, so, yes, down the road we're hoping to make them uh, available online. Uh, there's not an exact plan at this point because we're not sure the best uh, way of copying all those. Understood. Thank you. Uh, just a, a comment following up on that. As I understand, the University of Oregon is expending considerable amounts of resources digitizing much older newspapers, and I think their cutoff date is about 1930. And they're really uninterested in stuff that's not biodegrading as they look at it. Um, uh, but there is. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't mean for that to be funny, but I'm glad somebody liked that comment. Um, uh, so that there's uh, you know robust infrastructure at the, the state university system level to, to address scanning, um, and they'll even pay for stuff, but the stuff we apparently have is, uh, is not old enough, because I'd really like to see the Aloha Breeze uh, digitized and made available online, because this unincorporated community of Aloha um, looks like it's getting a little bit more love when you stated that uh, you know it's not just the Beaverton or Hillsborough Museum, it's the Washington County Museum. So I, you made me smile when you mentioned uh, communities like Timber uh, <laughs> that uh, also need a little bit of museum love. So thank you for being here. Thank you very much. Chris Leslie, once again, for member. Uh, you said Starbucks, over Starbucks. Yes, sir. I'm where? I mean, which star? We're, we're on the corner of Main and First in downtown Hillsboro. That one, that one right there. Thank you. I like it. Somebody didn't know where Starbucks was. That's great. Northeast corner of the yes. Civic Center. Right. Yeah. I know. It used to be a bookstore, wasn't it? No, it was called Law Office. It's not about that. It's about there's too many Starbucks. <laughs> are there any more are there any more questions folks then please let's join in a round of applause for mr Harmon. thank you very much sir. appreciate you being here and i imagine your board will expand successfully if not from 100 people out of this room it certainly will with the promotions that you're doing ladies and gentlemen next week we have rob drake the city manager for Cornelius, telling us a little bit about what's going on there. Actually, probably a lot about what's going on there. On the 8th, we have an interesting speaker, Joanne Krumberger, who's with the Portland Veterans Administration. I imagine we have a lot of questions for her. Um, ladies and gentlemen, on April 5th, 
there's something special going on at the Cedar Mill Library at 7 o'clock. And I've been kind of nudging folks in the little emails that we do. I want to start you guys talking about it now. If you have young people in your life, and for that matter, old people in your life, one of our board members, our second vice president, is going to deliver a wonderful talk at the Cedar Mill Library at 7 p.m. on April 5th. It's about serving in Congress. What's it like to serve in Congress? What's it like to serve? What's it like to be involved in politics? So Elizabeth Burse, April 5th at the Cedar Mill Library. You'll hear more about this. We're really excited about it. One of the rationales for having the Washington County Public Affairs Forum is bringing issues to the people. Well, gosh, we want people to be involved from the very beginning of their lives. All right, not at birth but as kids all the way through post-retirement, and we're working at that. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for being here today. We'll see you next week. Take care. Thank you, Rob. Thank you.